G'day, my name's Ewan from OOI, and this week in Google Trends, we really do have a very interesting period when it comes to data. Last week, I talked about the, the difference between the situation in Victoria versus other parts of Australia, and obviously in the news in Victoria, the situation has become much worse. So today, I'm just gonna cover a couple of different trends in terms of what's happening in terms of language. I'm gonna reflect on perhaps some of the trends that happened 90 days ago, and then what may be different in the last 24 hours. And then I'm gonna talk a bit about lessons learned that may be transferable when you're having a second go at how your business can thrive in these difficult times. The first one is I wanna talk about the language and the word lockdown. Perhaps 90 days ago, we were talking about the word isolation, but certainly the new word and the new vernacular being used in Victoria is lockdown. If you look at the trends, you know, a massive surge in terms of you know, what does lockdown mean? What does it mean for my life? and my life for the next six weeks in Victoria. That is fairly obvious. I wanna talk about something perhaps a little more interesting. There's been a bit of discussion in the media about just you know what's happening in Victoria and how important that is to other parts of Australia. So what I did, I looked at the term coronavirus Victoria to see how many people and what other states are searching for that type of term to see you know, how much this issue is national as opposed to localized. And the trend the last seven days is showing that most of the search in Victoria is for Victoria. And interestingly, the next states is Tasmania and South Australia that are quite low. So when you're looking at interest, it's very, very localized in terms of how Victorians are thinking. And yes, there is some interest from uh, other parts of Australia, but at this stage, uh, it's pretty much been seen that there's been terms been in Victoria almost being the leper land. I know it's a, it's, it's a harsh term, but it is very much localized in terms of the thinking about how we're being impacted in our local lives. The other one is the area of toilet paper. Well, how are we, how we, we going to be able to go to the supermarket and get our toilet paper? Well, the trend shows that yes, those people who love their toilet paper have been pretty active the last 24 hours, but it has come back a little. It's been almost peaking at the same levels of 90 days ago. So hopefully those people that love their toilet paper have got those and they can leave some for everyone else. That would be lovely, um, but that's been a bit of a trend. Um, are we gonna see the same supermarket panic? Perhaps not. You know, Woolworths has got a surge uh, in terms of traffic by about 10%, but it's certainly not to the same level that it was um, for 90 days. So what we're seeing uh, generally is yes a bit of panic but perhaps a bit more of a measured approach because we have been through this before so what does this mean for you as a business well I believe certainly the message in terms of localization is very very important as it is before in terms of understanding you know is Victoria an opportunity for your business or should you be focusing on other states or other regional areas those areas outside of metropolitan Melbourne I think that's very important the other thing is I think we've got a two-speed economy going on. And the two-speed economy is those businesses that are doing well and have got services, e-commerce or in regional areas or servicing people outside of Victoria, you know, this is a time you, you've got to be accelerating your strategy because there is absolutely genuine growth in those areas in the next three months. That is clear to see. For those businesses that are naturally impacted, I think this is the perfect time to reset your business over the next six weeks. The advantage is you do have a deadline of six weeks. So if you're a restaurant, and I really do feel for restaurants because we all love going to restaurants in Victoria and uh, we are envious of those people outside the state, but the weakness for restaurants, which you can now get ahead of, is you have lost control of your customer with Uber Eats and all these delivery. You have to invest in getting a database together and controlling your database using the next six weeks to build a database so when the market comes back, you can have direct access to the customer and you can take control of your destiny, which you don't have right now. Yes, that might involve an element of risk, but you've got to have a database, which means you don't have to pay 30, 35% to Uber Eats and you're in a position to control and get cost-effective customers when you come out this side. On the other side of things, I think if you use the next six weeks, this is the perfect time, just the same way people have renovated their houses, you need to renovate your online strategy. You've got six weeks where you're not on the tools and you can think about exactly what markets you wanna focus on, what's your value proposition, all these things that you probably did at the start of your business that you've never had a chance to look at again, this is the perfect time for you to do a reset in your strategy, build a database, redo your website, and if of course you want some help, we're here at ROI, we'd love to assist you.
Thanks for listening.